It's early morning here. We had scattered showers today. I don't know if I'm going to get any. I don't need any. And this is the seventh day since I seeded this roadway here that I'm calling it with turf type tall fescue and SPF 30, uh, con some hybrid Kentucky bluegrass. Now that's K Kentucky bluegrass. Well, I'm sorry, that's tall fescue there in the middle. Vehicles were running up and down this area trying to get back to the, uh, the trail that's back there. And now that the the work is completed this is what I was left with it is I mean it's holding water in some areas which is I don't know maybe stunting the growth of germination of some seeds especially back there the water kind of drains over into this creek right here however I'm seeing green pop up all over the place which is great now this um, the, the Kentucky bluegrass is a spreading type grass which will spread which is great and the tall fescue by nature is not however the hybrid stuff is has been you know modified to have a rhizominous nature, which basically saying that it spreads by rhizomes. So instead of just going in clumps, going straight up, it spreads out. So hopefully, you know, this area here, I'm not gonna add any more seeds here, even though it appears it's some washed out. But what I did do I came over the top and I really used that heavy roller and I rolled seeds deep as I could into the soil. And then I spread it, compost, and then I rolled seeds again and then spread it the peat moss. So I'm hoping to the areas where there's like this area here for example it looks like um you know there would be a bare spots but there actually could be seeds in there but as i said i'm going to wait to see what if what it's what it's um coverage is going to be before i do anything and obviously um this is a project in the late spring which is definitely not uh, recommended for the top fescue but it is it's okay for the SPF 30 uh, they say plant that anytime before a freeze uh, three weeks three or four weeks before a freeze or something like that so we're gonna put all this to the test hopefully um, I get it all to come up, which obviously that it's that you see it is already coming up. We're gonna we're gonna see what the establishment of it's going to be, and then the maintenance the requirements uh, to try to keep uh, it going. I do have some things that I'm going to do. Sprinklers pretty much stop right around along this line, and but I'm going not to. I'm gonna try not to, you know, spend a lot of water cost on this. So there's some things to help uh, help the water, the the moisture manager, the wetting agent, you know, surfactants, and um, some higher potassium fertilizers, some stress blend fertilizers. We're gonna put that on there. Another issue I have is traffic, sort of speak. Now back here, the story behind here is um, my neighbor here had a daughter that ran track. There is a concrete 
trail that goes behind here and it goes throughout the the city but the entrance is so far away so he started cutting this trail here and opened it up so that there could be access so his daughter can go back there and run the trail because she was in on the track team and there was a tragic accident out there some person was running from the police and struck her and killed her so he's been maintaining this trail as a memorial he tried to get the city to uh, take over keeping the trail nice and neat and cut and maybe dedicating it to her and of course the city said hasn't you know done anything so this is privately maintained if we didn't maintain it and I say we because when I moved next door here I also started cutting it you know just to uh, release some pressure off of him so again if we wouldn't have cut any of this I don't cut any of this there would not be an access to the trail there you know we there's trees going there but they were planted by us uh, just to make it nice so with that being said that's what I mean about traffic you know we do just a lot of people don't know about it just the community here the people who live in this area knows about this so it doesn't get that much traffic but nevertheless we do get some people who come by here and I guess they could assume that the property belongs to this guy, but I'm, I'm so far away that they don't assume that it belongs to me, which the property line goes from here all the way back to my house and his starts there and go all the way back. So this is primarily all on my property. And the issue that I have is, you know, they, people will just let their dog poop and just keep on walking. And, you know, one of the things I want to know, I, I don't want a no trespassing sign because I really don't mind people coming back and forth. That's what it's for. It's a memorial to his daughter. We take care of it. So I don't want people I don't want to discourage people from walking back there it's not a big issue but what is a big issue is uh you know leaving trash and uh, your dogs uh, poop and pee all over the yard you know it's at that right there is a big no-no that's why on this tree here I want to put a sign you know private property I like to have the arrows going back and forth, but I want to put a private property and a no poop sign over here. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to put the little flag, a uh, little tape, the caution tape here and there, because eventually this will dry out with someone to walk on it, but I don't want people walking on the seedlings. So I'm going to just put tape here and the thing of that about it is, you know, the assumption is that maybe this is the city. A lot of people tried to come and buy this lot right here, which I'm going to call it. They called it a lot, but it's not. This is my property goes all the way down here. So they're thinking that this is not part of my property or anyone's property, but it's but it's mine. And all of that over there is his. So that's the story. Get a little close. That's the story on this trail here. It's coming up. If you don't mind, like and subscribe so that I can update you.